Hi, welcome to my boring channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a photography website. This website will be minimalistic, yet it will showcase your photographs in a beautiful full screen manner. It looks great on a big screen device like my computer, and it will also look great on a mobile device. This website will be made using WordPress, and it will take us less than an hour to create. So let's get started. So the website we're going to make today is going to look like this. It's going to have a logo. It's going to have a nice little menu over here on the top and it's going to have picture galleries. This is a portfolio page. And then when you click on one of these galleries, it's going to open up like this and you'll be able to see all the pictures in there. When you click on the pictures, they'll open up beautifully. You can scroll through them. You can see them full screen if you'd like and continue to scroll through them. You can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard if you'd like. Go ahead and click the X when you want to get out of the gallery and we'll make a blog and I only have one blog post in right now. We'll make an about page. Here's my about page and we'll make a contact page and that will be the website. One cool thing when you scroll down you see the about us kind of disappear. That's kind of a neat little feature. Kind of eye catching. Now here's another website that's finished. This is from a buddy of mine, Seamus, who lives across the ocean somewhere. And he is an actual real photographer. So these are just unbelievable images. And you can browse through his site. It's uh, right up here, photoimaging.com. There's his site. And then, so browse through this site to see what it's going to look like. Also, I highly encourage you to look at it on a mobile phone or any mobile device and see if you like the way the site looks on a mobile device because that's also very important. And then here is one more website using this theme. And this is actually a website made by the company who makes this theme, Color Melon. So go ahead and go through this site as well and see what you think about it. BeFree.BuyColorMelon.com Browse through that and see how you like it. They have a few more details on this site than I have on mine for now. If you click on some of their blog posts, you will see that they also have galleries in the blog posts. And that's kind of nice as well. Okay, one more thing to keep in mind is that when you do write blog posts, at the bottom of your blog post, folks can comment on your pictures, and that's kind of cool. And I'm also going to show you how you can set it up so people can subscribe to your comments. If you have any questions that I don't answer in my tutorial, and there will be a lot because this is only a brief introduction to WordPress and images, uh, feel free to contact me via my website, myboringchannel.net. That's over here, um, myboringchannel.net. And then just click the contact link and shoot me an email. So before we can get started building our website, we're going to need two things, a domain name and web hosting. A domain name is yourname.com or yourname.net or something similar to that. That's going to be the first step. So before you actually purchase a domain name, I recommend reading this article on my website, myboringchannel.net, how to get a domain name. It explains all the little details that you need to know about purchasing a domain name, like what is privacy protection and do I really need it? What's the difference between .com, .net, .biz, .org? Does it matter? So read the article, it's very important, and then come back and purchase your domain name. Okay, so here's my website, myboringchannel.net. That's my domain name. Go ahead and hover over articles in my menu and go down to how to make a website. In here, you will want to choose this article here, how to choose a domain name. Go ahead and read through this article, and when you're finished, let's head on over to Namecheap. Okay, so once you're back to Namecheap, go ahead and click Sign Up, up here at the top. Once you're here, fill out this form. Be sure to write down your usernames and passwords for everything that we do today. And then when you're ready, click Create Account and Continue. Follow all the prompts and purchase your domain name. Now that you have your domain name, you're going to need web hosting. I recommend two web hosts, InMotion Hosting. I like to refer to them as the Toyota Corolla of web hosting because they're affordable, they provide a solid product, and it's suitable for most people, and it's very reliable. I also like to recommend Kinsta. Kinsta provides managed WordPress hosting, and 
And I like to refer to Kinsta as the Rolls Royce of web hosting because they are simply the best of the best of the best. By managed hosting, I mean they, they take care of backups, uh, site speed, optimization, security. Your website runs on the world's fastest infrastructure. They use cutting edge software and top of the line hardware. There is no better web host than Kinsta. Kinsta's base plan starts at $30 per month, whereas InMotion's plan that I'm going to recommend is about six or seven dollars per month. So as you can see, Kinsta is a lot more expensive, but for those who like the best of the best, and for those who also know that their website may be, is integral to the running of their business, they may want to consider the Kinsta offering. So once you've purchased your domain name, you're going to want to come to InMotion Hosting. I have a link in the description of my video to get here, so please click that to get here. So once you get here, you can look at these prices and and see that they're discounted. See the 56% off, 42% off, etc. If you don't see those discounts, that means you haven't clicked my link. You can also make sure you're on my landing page by scrolling down. As you scroll down, you'll see this banner pop up up here. Up to 56% off business hosting plans for my boring channel visitors. Okay, once you know you're at the right place, go ahead and click here. I recommend WordPress hosting. You can use the business class hosting but it is more complex and it is not totally optimized for WordPress. But this is what I used when I started out and it works fine. It's just a little bit more technical. I recommend this one if you want your life to be a little bit easier. It's just a little bit more expensive and it's designed just for WordPress websites. Not only that, they back up your data for you and they also help protect your website. So click on learn more here. Choose the plan you want. I would recommend this one. Now you'll notice that if you click this, you see that if you sign up for three years, you get $4.99 per month, two years, $5.99 per month, and one year, $6.99 per month. I never recommend locking yourself into any web hosting company for three years, especially if you're not familiar with them. So I would probably choose this one, one year, $6.99 per month. Okay, then you'll show up on this page. Pick the data center that's closest to you. I live on the West Coast, so the Los Angeles one is appropriate for me. Dedicated IP, no thanks. Check to make sure your price is what you expect it to be. Scroll down, click install WordPress. That will alleviate some, some work for you in the future. And then click continue when you're ready. Now on this page, you're gonna click I already own this domain and you're gonna enter in the domain name that you purchased at Namecheap. And then you're going to click continue. So unfortunately, I can't go beyond this page because I'm not signing up for an account myself but just follow through the process. And if you need help, InMotion has 24 seven technical support via chat or phone, contact them and they will help you get logged into your WordPress website for the first time. Okay, so now there's one more thing we have to do. You have your domain name, you have your web hosting. Now we have to point our domain name to InMotion's servers. How do we do that? Simple, go ahead and sign in to your Namecheap account once you're signed in, you'll see your uh, username right here. Mine's My Boring Channel. Hover over Account and then click on Dashboard. You will come to this page right here. You will see your domain names listed down here. What you'll want to do is find your domain name and click Manage right here. Now, scroll down a bit and you'll see Name Servers right here. You're going to want to change these here. Yours will be different than mine. You're gonna to wanna to change those to InMotion's name servers. Here are InMotion's name servers. Go ahead and copy this one here, ns1.inmotionhosting.com, and paste it right here. Copy this one, ns2.inmotionhosting.com, and paste it right here. When you're done with that, go ahead and click this little green check mark to save it. Once you do that, you may need to wait a few hours for your website to be active. So once you've completed these steps, you now have a domain name, you now have web hosting, and you can now log into your WordPress website for the first time, and we can start building your photography website. Like I said, if you're having trouble signing into your WordPress website for the first time, be sure to contact technical support, and they will get you to this point. They are open 24 seven. On my website, at the bottom, I have a link to InMotion here. I also have a link to Kinsta here. I didn't talk about signing up with Kinsta because I'm assuming most people will go with InMotion Hosting. But if you are interested in Kinsta, click my link here and it will bring you here. You can click View Plans and then you can sign up for a hosting plan just like you did with InMotion Hosting. Again, you will have 24-7 technical support 
They will walk you through the process of getting your WordPress website up and running for the first time, and they will help you log in. Okay, when you first log into your WordPress website, you're going to be at this screen right here. Right now, if you hover over this and then click on Visit Site, you will see this, or something very similar to this. This is the default WordPress theme. We're going to change it up. So hover over this and then click on Dashboard. Okay, now hover over Appearance and then click on Themes. Now we're going to click Add New, and we're going to install a theme called Hamilton. Okay, here it is. Go ahead and click Install, and that's all you have to do for now. Okay, so now if you click on Themes, you will see that you have these themes installed. And right now, 2017 is active. We also want to add another theme. So we can go back to Themes and then click Add New. We can click Add New here, or we can click Add New Theme here. This one is going to be called Minimalist Portfolio. Click that, and you will see this theme here. Go ahead and click Install and then click activate. We are going to activate this one. So what happens when you install a child theme is that it inherits functionality from the parent theme. So we need both of these themes. Let's go ahead and look at our site now. Hover over this and click visit site. You will see that it looks different because we have now activated the minimalist portfolio child theme. So go back to your dashboard and it says here this theme recommends the following plugin, Easy Photography Portfolio. Indeed, we do need this plugin. We can click here, begin installing plugin, or we can go to plugins and then click add new and then type it in. And there it is. Go ahead and click install now and then click activate. So here are our plugins. We also can see here that Yoast SEO needs an update. Whenever you see, whenever you're in your dashboard and you see a little red number like this, that means you need an update. Go ahead and click on whatever needs updating. You can click here or here and you will see this plugin needs an update. So it's always good to keep your plugins updated when you have a WordPress website. In fact, it's better than good. It's essential for security. Go ahead and click update now if you have any plugins that need updating that is. So now we've installed the things we need to make our website. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a logo. So in order to do that, hover over Appearance and then click Customize. Go to Site Identity and then click Select Logo. Go to Upload Files right here and then click Select Files. Here is the logo that I would like to use. You want something that's going to be 100 pixels tall if possible. As you can see, this one is 320 wide by 100 pixels tall. If you need help creating a logo, I can give you some ideas. Just ask questions in the comments section or contact me via my website, myboringchannel.net. Double click the image you want to upload. Go ahead and put in some alt text. The alt text is very important. It's alternative text. It allows folks who are blind to have the description of the image read to them. So it's for accessibility purposes and it's important. It's also important for uh, if you want your images to be listed in Google Images. When you're done typing in your alt text, go ahead and click select. We're going to crop this image and we're going to drag these edges out and then click crop image. And there we have it. We now have a logo on our website. That's very cool. Now right under our logo, it says site title here. What you type in here is going to show up down here in your copyright uh, section of your website down at the bottom. Okay, so now when you're ready here, go ahead and click publish. And now your logo is permanent on your site. Well, permanent until you change it. Go ahead and click the X here and then you're back on your dashboard. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a menu. So go to appearance and then click menus right here. Now, let's go ahead and call this our main menu and then click Create Menu. So when we installed the Portfolio plugin, it created a page for us called Portfolio right here. So go ahead and click that and then click Add to Menu. Okay, we've just added the first thing to our menu called Portfolio. We want this to be our primary menu, so click Primary Menu here and then click Save Menu. Let's go ahead and click Customize here under Appearance and make sure our menu looks like we want it to look. Click Customize and then go into theme options here and we're going to make sure this box is checked here. 
show primary menu in the header. What that's going to do is allow our menu to show up here across the top instead of as a uh, navigation toggle. See if this is off, then we have the navigation toggle instead. So if you click this, then your menu will appear. But I like the menu to show up all the time. And we're only going to have a few items in here. So we're going to do it this way. Go ahead and click Publish. Now, since I want my portfolio to be my home page, I'm going to have to change my home page options. So go ahead and click back here and go to home page settings here. Now, change this to be a static page. And we're going to select what our home page is going to be. So click this and then click portfolio. We are also going to need to select a blog page at some point, but we will do that a little bit later. Go ahead and click publish. And then X out of this. Now, if you want to see what your site looks like, you can hover over this and click on visit site. And this is it so far. We have our menu over here. We have our logo here. And when you click this, it takes us to our portfolio page, our home page here. So that's good. We're making progress. Let's go back to our dashboard. So now we're going to go to portfolio and we're going to go to all entries. We can see our portfolio entries here. We're going to change this first one. So we're going to just click edit underneath it. And we're going to call this something other than first portfolio entry. Let's call it uh, uh, close ups. And then you can type in a blurb in here, whatever you want it to say, something, you know, like a subtitle that's going to go under your main title. So like uh, nothing like a close up to capture emotion. How about that? And then we have our paragraph, what we want to write here, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to leave that blank for now. Okay, so now let's scroll down a little bit and you'll see this photography portfolio right here. This is where we're going to add our images. Now you want your images to be big um, because this theme will resize them automatically. So you want them to look good on a big screen and you want them to look good on a small screen as well. I would recommend at the minimum 1600 by 1200, uh, 1600 wide. But you can also use full HD size, which is 1920 by 1080. So let's go ahead and click Add Images here, and then Upload Files, and then Select File. So now go ahead and choose the photos you want. I'm going to do some close-ups here. This one, this one, this one. There's some close-ups. Then click Open, and then WordPress will upload those photos that you just chose. Make sure to add the alternate text to all of your images. It is very important. So like for this one here, I would type in black and white of blonde brother and sister. The more detailed you are in your description, the better your alt text will work for you. I'm going to go ahead and click use these files. And now all those pictures are going to be in this gallery. I'm going to remove this featured image though. This is the image that's going to show up on my home page, And I don't want that image showing up. That's the one that's here by default. So I'm going to remove that and I'm going to set a featured image that I want to use. I'm going to go ahead and use this image for my featured image and then I will click set featured image. Okay, now I'm going to click update. Now I'm going to go back to my home page by hovering over this and then clicking visit site. Boom. Here we go. I have something. Close ups. Nothing like a close up to capture emotion. Here's my title. Here's my subtitle. And then I can click on View Gallery here. And here's what the gallery looks like. Now if I click on an image, it will appear full screen. Well, not full screen, but large screen anyway. And I can scroll through the images like this. Now if I do want to see them full screen, I can click this button right here. And I could scroll through them like this. Or I can use my right and left arrow buttons to scroll through the pictures as well. To get out of here, I click Escape. And then I click X here. Now I can share my images with social media by clicking this little arrow right here. And I can zoom in on the image by clicking this. To get out of this, gallery, I simply click the X and here I am. Now if I wanted to add more text here, I could type in whatever I wanted to type. Here, I'm going to click edit portfolio entry right here. I can type in some text right here and then that will show up right here. Okay, so we're making some progress on our site. Let's go ahead and make another um, gallery. I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to go to my dashboard. 
I'm going to hover over portfolio and then click new portfolio entry. Now for this one, I'm going to call it black and white and say something like black and white photos bring out the emotion or something like that. Whatever you want to say, it's up to you. I'm not going to put anything in here for now. I'm going to click add images down here in the photography portfolio. And then I'm going to go to upload files and then select files. And then I'm going to choose some black and white images. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's do just a few more here. 10. That should be good. And then click open. WordPress will upload all these images for me. Then I need to go back in and put in alternative text for each image. Then I will click use these files. Just make sure that these tick boxes are checked before you click use these files. I would also recommend keeping your images as small as possible in terms of file size so that they will load quickly on your site. Go ahead and click use these files when you're ready. Now I'm going to also set another featured image and I think I will use this one right here and then I'll click set featured image. Then I will click publish. Now I'm going to go look at my homepage again, visit site and here we are on my homepage. Very nice. You know, for this one, I should probably not use a black and white image for my featured image. So let's click on this here. There are multiple ways we can go back and find our, our posts to edit. We can go back into portfolio entries and edit there, or we can simply go to the uh, gallery we want to edit and then click edit portfolio entry. Now in here, I'm going to remove this featured image and I'm going to set a different featured image. How about, oh, they're all so cute. How about, how about this one? Then set featured image and then update. So now when we go to our home page, it's going to look like this. Beautiful, it's coming along. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a few more galleries for my portfolio page here and then I will be back in just a few minutes. Now here's a friend of mine's site who used the same theme and you can see his pictures are lined up a little more evenly because he used the same size images for all his featured images so they lined up more straight. If you like that look better make sure that you use images for your featured images that are all the same size. So now what I want to talk about for just a moment, let's go back to our dashboard. I want to talk about creating categories for your portfolio entries. So go ahead and click on portfolio and then categories. Now here you can add categories. So maybe I want um, people and outdoors for two of my categories, just for an example. I've gone ahead and created two new categories now, people and outdoors. I'm going to go back to my portfolio entries. I'm going to click on all entries here. And I'm going to click on edit for family and friends. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in the people category and then click update. I can do that with my other entries as well. So outdoors would be in the outdoors category. Update. Black and white. Most of these were people, I believe. So I would put them in the people category and then click update. And then my last one is close ups. And I believe these were also all people. Update. Now, is this important? Do we have to add categories like this? Well, no, we don't. But what this will allow us to do is create menu items with these categories. For example, if somebody clicked a menu item that said people, then it would take them to all my people images. So I can do that by going to appearance and menus and then categories. So there should be a box here that says portfolio categories. If there's not, go up here to screen options and then make sure you have portfolio categories tagged here and then shut that and you'll see now you have portfolio categories here so we can now click people and then click add to menu and then we can either make it a sub menu item like this by dragging it to the right and now it'll be a sub menu item or just leave it as a main menu item and then click save menu and then go back to our home page and you'll see we now have our portfolio page here but if we click on people it will take us to all our people galleries and so you can use portfolio categories to create menu items to organize your site in a variety of different ways. For now, I'm going to take that off of my menu because that's not my ultimate uh, outcome that I want. Now let's hover over this. And instead of going to our dashboard this time, you can see that whenever you hover over these things, different shortcuts appear. So we can go straight to menus from here. Click on menus. 
and then I'm going to click this little down arrow right here and then I'm going to remove it from the menu and then click Save Menu. So now you know how to create portfolio categories and how, why they can be useful. So now I'm going to create a couple new pages. I'm going to create, I'm going to go to Pages here and I'm going to click Add New right here. I'm going to call this page the About Us page. I'll go ahead and set a featured image. Here's me with my family. So I'll, I'll do that one. I'll click Set Featured Image. I'll type up some garbage about myself. Hi, I'm really cool. And then I'm going to click Publish. Then I'm going to go here and click Visit Site. And wait, where's my About Us page in my menu? Well, I haven't added it to my menu. I have to do that. So go back here, go to Menus. Now, About Us, click it here. And then click Add to Menu. Now it's right here. It says About Us. Actually, I want it just to say About. I want it to be nice and short. Now Save Menu. Now let's go look at it again. Okay, there we go. Portfolio, which is this home page, and then about. Here's my about us page. Hi, I'm really cool. Blah, blah, blah. There's my about us page. Very nice. And watch another cool thing that happens when I scroll down. Watch. Ooh, the about us disappears. Kind of a neat feature. Okay, so I'm going to create another page. Now you can also create new pages. Instead of going to your dashboard and then clicking on pages and add new, you can go here, new page or new post or new portfolio entry etc so I'm going to go new page and I'm going to call this one contact now I don't have a plugin to create a contact form yet so I need one I'm going to get one so go ahead and click save draft for now now let's go to plugins down here and then click add new right here okay I'm going to get a plugin called jetpack and there it is right there I don't even have to search for it go ahead and click install now now, some people don't like Jetpack, but personally, I love it. It's absolutely amazing, in my opinion. Go ahead and click Activate. Now, you're going to need a WordPress.com account to make this work. So let's go ahead and click on Set Up Jetpack. Then it will bring you to this page that tells you you need to log into your WordPress.com account. If you don't have a WordPress.com account, you're going to need to sign up for one. Now, go ahead and click Sign Up up here in the upper right corner. Okay, then you will come to this page. Go ahead and click down here where it says start with free. And that's it. Jetpack is now activated on your website. Now what do you have that you didn't have before? Well, I'll show you. You now have an option over here that says Jetpack that wasn't here before. Okay, if you go to settings, you can see that there are a lot of different things you can go through and change in here. For example, you can enable the WordPress.com toolbar. We don't want to do that. You can have a spell check come on, that's great. There's actually an easier way to see everything that Jetpack allows you to do, and that's by going down to the very bottom and clicking Debug. It's kind of strange. I guess they don't really want you getting to all the settings, but here they are. Click Debug, and then down here we'll see access the full list of Jetpack modules available on your site. That's what we want to click. Okay, now that we're in here, we can go ahead and activate or deactivate any of the things the Jetpack offers. So we don't need beautiful math, we're going to deactivate that. Comment likes. Do we need it? Maybe, maybe not. Let's go ahead and activate it, it's kind of cool. Contact form, yes we want that. Custom CSS, yes we want that. Custom CSS actually allows you to have, to be able to change your website's CSS without creating a child theme. It's nice to have. We don't exactly need it for this website, but it's good. Custom content types, we'll leave that. Enhanced distribution, we'll leave that. Extra sidebar widgets, that might come in useful. Gravatar hover cards, nah, we'll deactivate that. Notifications, nah. Post my email, nah. Protect, yeah, we can leave that on because that actually helps protect our website from hackers and such, that's good. Publicize is really cool, I'll explain that in a few minutes. Well, actually, what Publicize allows you to do is when you create a blog post, it will automatically post to your social media networks for you, which is really nice. Sharing, we'll leave that on. Short code embeds, we don't necessarily need that. It could be useful, but we don't need it. Let's deactivate it. We're deactivating everything we don't need. Spelling and grammar, I don't need because, well, I, I can spell pretty well. Not to toot my own horn or anything. Widget visibility, I'll leave that on. Subscriptions I'll leave on and site stats I'll leave on. This short links one we can also deactivate. 
Okay, so that's how I like to set up Jetpack. I'm not going to talk much about Jetpack in this tutorial, but if you have questions about Jetpack, feel free to email me at myboringchannel.net. Go to my website and contact me there, or just pop down in the comments of this video and ask me some questions. I'll answer any questions you have. So for the time being, we're going to go to Pages, and then All Pages, and we're going to look at this draft of the contact page that we started. Go ahead and click Edit, and we're going to edit our contact page. Now, you'll notice up here it says Add Contact Form. That was not there before. So we're going to click that, and this form will appear automatically on, on this page. And that's all we got to do. Now, if you want to edit this form, that's also very easy. You can click the form itself. And then there's a little pencil that will show up right here, a little pencil icon right there. Click that, and you can add fields and take away fields. I'm not going to change anything right now, but if you don't have your email set correctly, go ahead and put your email address that you want your emails to come to here. And then when you're ready, go ahead and click Publish. Now, like I said, this is not a Jetpack tutorial, but this is a quick and easy way to get a contact form on your website. Okay, let's go back to our site. Now, oh, my contact page is not showing up in my menu. We've got to add it to the menu. So hover here, go to menus, click on contact, click on add to menu. Now, click save menu. Now, go ahead and hover here and go to visit site and let's look at our homepage. There we go, portfolio, about, and contact. Contact page looks like this. So somebody can put their name, email, website, message in there and click submit. Easy. You can also click edit page right here and you can add an image to your contact page if you would like by setting a featured image so you can do that or you don't have to it's up to you now you'll also notice we have this this is new likes and shares show likes and show sharing buttons so now what i'd like to do is i'd like to look at the different sharing options that jetpack offers so let's go ahead here back to dashboard okay so we're here on our dashboard let's go down to settings on the left here and then to sharing right here So what I like to do is I like to have a Facebook share, so I'll drag Facebook down here, and I like to have a Twitter share. Now you may want to add some more of these, if, if you'd like, feel free. Uh, for me, I just like those two. Now I like it to look like uh, a button, so I'm going to say button or icon only, and it's going to look like that. And then I'll have this sharing label It says share this. I don't really need that. I'm going to get rid of it because I think people know what it means when they click the buttons. So I want the buttons to show on my pages, posts, front page, and my portfolio entries. Then I'm going to go ahead and click save changes. And I'm going to go back to my main page. I'm going to click on about. I'm going to scroll down and look. Look what I see here. Sharing options. However, I don't really want sharing options on my about page, so I'm going to click edit page, I'm going to scroll down a little bit, and I'm going to untick show likes and show sharing buttons because I don't want them. Then I will click update. Let's look at our other pages. We don't really need sharing buttons on our contact page either, so let's undo those. Right? Click update, then we'll click all pages again. We have this sample page which we don't need. We can click trash for that one, so trash. And it's gone. Now, if you notice, I have this little S right here, up here. It's like a, they call it a site icon. In order to get that, you have to go to your customizer. So click customize here, or go to your dashboard and then click customize. And then go to your site identity. And then scroll down a little bit, and you'll see site icon. It tells you here site icons should be square and at least 512 by 512 pixels. So that's what this one is. It's 512 by 512. It's a little image I just made, and it doesn't mean anything. I just threw it together. So go ahead and just click Change Image, or if that's not there, you'll click Upload, and then upload your image you want, and then click Publish. And then you will also have a nice little site icon up here in the tab. Okay, so back to our dashboard. So next, your website's going to need a blog. So let's go ahead and add a blog. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to go to Pages here, and then we're going to click add new. And we're going to call this page blog or whatever you want to call it. And all your blog posts are going to show up here on this page. Okay. So go ahead and click publish. That's all we have to do. We've made our page. Now let's go ahead and click on appearance and then customize. 
and then home page settings here and then for posts page which is our which is our blog page we're going to click blog and then click publish now how do we access our blog we still can't see it on our site there's no link to it so we're going to add a blog link here in our menu so go to menus go to blog click it here and then click add to menu so now we have a link to our blog page here okay i'm going to put it actually a second i think and then click save menu now let's go back and look at it and there it is there's a blog let's go to it there's nothing there why well because we haven't created any posts yet a post is different than a page a page is just a static page on your site a post is what shows up in your blog only so to create a new post simply go here and click new post or you can go to your dashboard and you can go to posts here on the side and then click add new again you can categorize your posts the same way I showed you how to categorize your portfolio galleries okay so let's click add new we're gonna write a post depth of field so this is gonna be a quick short tutorial on depth of field hi this is a quick tutorial on depth of field of course i'm not going to write one right now and it says uncategorized here i always categorize all my posts because it helps organize your website so think beforehand what do you want your categories to be well i might have a a tutorials category and again i can create a, a menu item for this in my main navigation menu i don't have to so i'll click add new category here now I may also want a category on uh, lenses so maybe I want to tell people about the best lenses out there so lenses add a new category now keep in mind that a blog is an excellent way to get people to come to your website and to get Google to to list your website and, and to bring your website rankings your search rankings up higher because the more content you write and the more um, authoritative content you write in your blog the more likely you are to get listed in a high in a high search result on Google and then people can find you and then you become an expert in your field and then you get so much traffic you don't know what to do with it all and you become super rich and then you send me a check for a couple hundred thousand and I would really appreciate that so write a lot of blog posts make sure you organize them well okay with categories now I'm going to also you can also organize your blog posts with tags so use keywords in here like um, tutorials okay that's gonna be my tag for this blog post and then click add now I'm going to show sharing buttons but not likes okay um, I'm going to set my featured image and I'm going to have it be um, let's go ahead and upload a file and let's choose and this one might be good okay so make sure you put in your alternative text here I'm not doing that I should be but I'm not doing it for the purposes of this tutorial I want to move through this so now click set featured image and then click publish you have now published your first blog post there's so much more that could be said about blog posts but I'm not going to take the time right now let's go ahead back to my main home page click visit site here here we are here's my blog click it and there's my first blog post boom depth of field click it and there's my featured image and there's my tutorial down below now below the tutorial people can leave comments and that's really cool as well now you'll notice underneath the comments this notify me of follow-up comments by email or notify me of new posts by email this is a really cool feature offered by jetpack it's the subscriptions module that we left activated so if people leave a comment they can then click these and then anytime anybody posts a new comment to them they will get an email so it's a way for you to get return visitors to your site and that's really really cool okay so there's how you create your blog and your blog posts so now our site really is getting nearly done so what else do we need to do well sometimes you may want to reorder your galleries on your portfolio page or say you create additional portfolios and you want to rearrange these how are you supposed to do that because WordPress by default organizes these things by the date that they were created so what we can do is we can download a free plugin that will help us with this so let's go ahead to plugins down here and then click add new we're going to type in post types order and then click enter and you will see this plugin here it's got a lot of installations that's good 
it's uh, hasn't been updated for a while. You, you do want plugins that are updated regularly, but this is a good plugin. Let's go ahead and install it. Just keep these things in mind in the future. When you're installing plugins and themes and, and things like that on your WordPress website, make sure they're popular, make sure they're well rated, and make sure they're always updated. That way your site stays secure. Okay, go ahead and click activate. And now when we go to our portfolio entries, we can simply drag them to a different order. And that functionality has been made available to us via the plugin that we just installed. This is telling us that post order type post types order must be configured. Maybe we should go to the settings page and make sure it's configured. I, I would recommend reading through these and, and, and changing what you need to change. But by default, it works. So go ahead and click save. Then go back to portfolio and all entries. And like I said, you can drag these around and put them in whatever order you would like. Then when you go back to your main page, you will see that the order has changed. Outdoors was not what I had first before. But now, Outdoors is first. So it's very easy to, to use and to do. Okay, so let's look at our site again here. So here's the site we've created so far. Our main homepage has four galleries on it, and this is our portfolio page. Okay, when you click on one of the galleries, it opens up, and you see all your beautiful pictures that are in that gallery. Very nice. When you click on these pictures, they open up in a very nice large gallery that loads quickly and functions well on any device, including mobile devices, iPads, iPods, iPhones, Android phones, any of these devices, or on a big screen as you can see here. Here's full screen. It just looks beautiful and it functions really quickly and really well. And on a, on a mobile device, it also looks quite awesome and it just automatically resizes to fit your mobile device and it's quick and responsive and it's just, it, it's really nice. So we've done that. We've uploaded our logo. We've uploaded our site icon. We've created a blog. We've created an about page. We've created a contact page. Now remember, we can add images to the contact page if we want. And, and we can also, something I didn't really talk about much, but in our blog posts, we can also add galleries and we can, we can do all sorts of things. There's so much more that I haven't shown you yet. I mean, I could make this tutorial go on forever, but at some point we do have to stop. So let's go ahead and look at a couple other sites that are using this theme as well. So my buddy, um, Seamus, who lives uh, somewhere in uh, Northampton or something, somewhere way out there in the middle of nowhere, he created this site using this theme. I, everything I know about photographs, I've learned from him. Not really, but he's amazing. He really is. So this is his site, and he's just getting it together. So I would take a few minutes to browse through his site. I mean, his images are incredible. Just incredible. And so that's an example of one that's working. And you can see he also has some submenus here under his portfolio. So you can click on, like, babies. And then there's the babies gallery or pets. There's the pets gallery. And so if you want to know how to do that, ask me and I can and I can help you with that. He's got his about me page here. Beautiful. And his contact me page. Nice. And his blog. Right now he has just two blog posts. But if you click on one, it'll open up and you'll see down below He's also added a gallery in here, which looks kind of nice. Okay, into this blog post. And then you can leave comments down below. And you'll see this here. Now when he has more blog posts, there'll be a picture here, which if you click it, it will take you back to the last blog post or take you forward to the next blog post. There'll be an image over here as well. So here's another one using the same uh, theme. Now this is actually, this is a website created by the folks who actually make this theme. And the name of their company is called Color Melon. And they are very amazing. Um, and they've actually created a tutorial for this theme, which I also used to help make my video. So if you scroll through this website, you'll see this, this is their portfolio page. And again, it works just like the one I showed you. You click it, it opens up the gallery. You can click on the gallery and you can go through and see their pictures. It's very nice. And then they, they, they put a few more, they have some categories up here at the top that they created using the portfolio galleries, a feature I told you about. 
So here's their people, galleries. Now you can you can have this be a drop down like uh, my buddy Seamus did here. See, or you can have it just be across the top like they did. Okay, and then objects. Okay, and then about. Here's their about page. Okay, their contact page. They used a different contact form than I did. They both do the same thing though. And then they have a blog page. They have multiple blog posts here. So here's, if you click on this one and scroll down to the bottom, they have a gallery right here as well. When you scroll down, you'll see different blog entries down here. Here's the next one. So you can click on this and it'll take you to another blog entry. Scroll down again and you can click on different blog entries down below. And that's kind of cool. So that's that. And that's how you create a photography website that looks professional and amazing in less than an hour. Now, I want to say one more thing, or actually I want to say a couple more things, but I'll make this really quick. If you like this theme, you can buy premium themes from Color Melon that kind of use this same uh, um, format. They basically, I mean, they're not the same. They're more advanced, and that's why they cost money. This is Color Melon's free theme that they just give to people. But... If you want something more advanced to take your website to the next level, you can buy one of Color Melon's themes and you will kind of already have an understanding of how the theme works. You will have to figure out the new features, but if you buy a theme from Color Melon, you will also have technical support included with your purchase. That's pretty cool. So I would highly consider buying a premium theme from Color Melon if this is too simplistic for you and you want something more. So go ahead to their site. I have a link to the Color Melon website in my description and check it out. So have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. One more thing I would ask is that when you get your website done, please send it over to me, post a link to it in the comments, or email me via my website and share the link with me. I would love to see your creation using my tutorial. Thanks for watching my video today. I really appreciate it. I hope you learned a lot and uh, I hope you come back next time. Wait, I'm gonna do that again. How about I'll start saying, please subscribe, and then you say, and then you say, to my boring channel. No, to our channel. Oh, my boring channel. That's what it's called. Okay. Thanks for watching my video today. I really appreciate it. I hope you learned a lot. Please subscribe to my boring channel. See you next time on my boring channel. Yeah. yeah.